so Congressman-elect Fry, how does that sound? Uh, it's great. I mean, we, we've worked really hard for a year um, getting our message out there, talking to people, meeting voters. So I'm really excited about the opportunity. I'm excited about this next Congress. In your time as a state representative, you jumped right into the fray on issues, writing bills, legislation. Are you thinking you'll have that same kind of, you know, hit the ground running feel in Washington? Or you think it'll be a little more slow and let's see where, what door opens here for me to jump in and get into an issue and actively at the legislative writing level? I, I think we're going to jump right in. I mean, I think there's, there's things that develop over time, obviously, but it's really important to me to hit the ground running. Obviously, we've got a lot of very big issues that face not only this state, uh, but this country. And so jumping in uh, both feet first into the deep end, I think is important. I think people expect that of their public, uh, their public servants. What did Tom Rice do that you think still works for this area? I think at the end of the day, if you can be part of the glue that holds things together, that, that propel this area, this region forward just a little bit farther, I think that's important. I think local issues matter. Certainly the, the big sexy things are uh, the big votes that you take in Congress and where you stand on those votes. But at the end of the day, people, people want a congressman who understands the nuances of what's going on back home. For you, what have been the key things you've heard here at home that you're going to take up there and always have in your back pocket? I think infrastructure is really important. I think people hear that, but if you look at southern states as an example where people are moving to in heavy numbers, uh, infrastructure is behind. And it's just because of the amount of people that are moving to southern states, traditionally from um, the Rust Belt or for the, from the Northeast, um, even the West Coast. And so I think we really need to be attentive to that. What do you think the chances are of I-73 being something that hits the ground and actually shovels, move dirt while you're in office? I think interstate connectivity helps. I mean, it's a public safety issue for, for an area that doesn't have an interstate. Uh, people getting out of harm's way during a hurricane, I think, is incredibly important. Um, having that economic driver, you know, look, tourism funds this state in a lot of ways, and it's incredibly um, important for our area. What are some other issues I want to ask you? Go ahead, just to, you know, give a good broad stroke on issues. Infrastructure, it's probably top of mind. What would be next? Look, I think beach renourishment obviously is important. Uh, we've got to continue that. Obviously, we've had hurricanes and some renourishment issues there. I think uh, um, flood resiliency is really important in this area. We saw in 2017 with Hurricane Florence how devastating that amount of water coming from North Carolina, coming from the hurricane can be. Um, so are there cr creative ways the state's already led on that? Are there creative federal ways that we can continue to be flood resilient? I think that's really important too. So those are all kind of part and parcel to local issues that really matter. Um, that you can focus on for sure. We've already seen this current Congress try to do a lot to tackle it. What do you think will take place in 2023, possibly even 2024, that you want to be a part of to try and get this economy where it impacts people less in terms of inflated prices? When you look at the real world effects of what inflation does um, to everyday Americans, it's, it's catastrophic. And so the, the number one driver of that inflation right now is government spending. I mean, we have printed money um, very heavily for the last two years, and we're handing it out all over the place, and, it, and it's having a real impact on people. And, and Democrats even acknowledge this now, but they said that the Inflation Reduction Act, they knew, wasn't going to actually reduce inflation, but they passed it anyway because it was important for the president. Well, that's the wrong approach. I think we got to rein in our federal spending. I think we have to rein in our federal deficit, too. We have to get to a place where we're not printing money um, to, 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 to pay for things for, for an electoral win, that we are actually serious about tackling this because it's not only an economic issue, but it's a national security issue on who holds our debt. Uh, but it's, it, it, it touches all segments of our culture and our society, and we've, we've got to get a handle on it. When we talk about reigning in the economy, is it going to be all government, or is it also going to be a conversation with corporate people, those bigger companies that seem to have issues with how much they charge people, offering services and canceling flights and not offering refunds? Do you think that's something that also will be looked at in this Congress? I think possibly, but at the end of the day, I mean, I think the market dictates the market, right? And I think if you, if you allow the private sector to do its job and you get it out of the way, I mean, this, this actually invites another conversation about regulatory reform. I mean, how much bureaucratic red tape is coming out of Washington, D.C. on anything right now? And I think that's a hamper to business, not only maybe infrastructure businesses, but uh, really all over that they have to follow this rubric. I mean, under the prior administration, they made it a hallmark to cut, um, to cut those 
those regulations. And I think that's really important that, that you have experts in the field who are, who are making these regulations or looking at these things and that you don't have some recent graduate bean counter who has never any field experience in the, in the type of area that they hope to regulate. So I think that's really important too, just from a top level perspective that, that would help unleash the American economy even more. What's going to be an issue you'll try to bring to the front and champion to try and ease the burden on those on fixed income for this area? I think if you fix the economy and you fix the interest rates and you fix the inflation, you help a lot of that. I mean, that's, that's the gut punch to middle America and that's the gut punch to people on fixed incomes who are retired, is that the prices of everything are going up, but their retirement are, are staying the same, that their incomes are staying the same or, or, or decreasing in some, in some aspects. And so we really have to get a handle on that. Well, when, you, when, when we say things like fixed economy, what do you think that's going to look like? Is it going to be resolutions to Jerome Powell, to the Fed? Do you think it's going to be uh, conversations with Janet Yellen? I mean, what, what is exactly would those steps be, do you think? Or maybe you've already heard them through orientation. I think, I think it's a, a, a trifold approach. The first thing is that the, 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 the new Republican majority provide a level of oversight on this administration that hasn't existed for two years. Peel back the layers of the onion uh, and show really the, the problems in this administration, of which there are many. I mean, I don't think that anyone looks at where we are right now and says, this is heading in the right direction compared to two years ago. So getting back to that place is really important and oversight helps deliver that. The other thing is passing common sense solutions that the American people expect. We campaigned on that in the Republican commitment to America, empowering parents to be part of their child's education, fixing the economy, unleashing energy independence. I mean, right now there are thousands of permits waiting to be approved by federal government that isn't approving permits to help with energy. And so these, are, these have a direct correlation to the price of gas. They have a direct correlation to the energy bills for your home that every single American feels right now. So I think passing those, uh, those bills uh, and sending them to the Senate is really important. Would you support seeing offshore oil drilling on the Atlantic coast? Not on the Atlantic coast, no. I think the people don't want it. I think there's some, some issues there. Uh, there are a lot of uh, states that are open to that themselves. There's fracking. There's, you know, you have Pennsylvania, you have uh, oil rigs in, um, in Louisiana. Uh, I think the American people or the, or the South Carolina people have, have said pretty overwhelmingly that they don't want that. The governor has said that he doesn't want that here. I think East Coast governors uh, up and down the Atlantic coast have said no. Um, so I don't think that's the right move. In committees, that's where a lot of the conversation takes place. Where are some committees you hope to land first if you do get any selections? You, we, we were asked to pick five um, that we might be interested in. And so those committee selections happen, I think, late, Jan or late December, early January. So we'll see what happens. Um, those are national issues, obviously, um, that I want to focus on. Those are local issues, like transportation. So uh, wherever I am placed, I will serve and I will work hard.